Good morning. It's time for Daily Chapel at the LCMS International Center in St. Louis. The text is 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 11 through 20. The broadcast of Chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. A reading from the Holy Apostle Peter's first epistle, chapter 2. The Holy Apostle writes, Beloved, I urge you as sojourners and exiles to abstain from the passions of the flesh, which wage war against your soul. Keep your conduct among the Gentiles honorable, so that when they speak against you as evildoers, they may see your good deeds and glorify God on the day of visitation. Be subject for the Lord's sake to every human institution, whether it be to the emperor as supreme, or to governors as sent by him to punish those who do evil and to praise those who do good. For this is the will of God, that by doing good you should put to silence the ignorance of foolish people. Live as people who are free, not using your freedom as a cover-up for evil, but living as servants of God. Honor everyone, love the brotherhood, fear God, honor the emperor. Servants, be subject to your masters with all respect, not only to the good and gentle, but also to the unjust. For this is a gracious thing, when mindful of God, one endures sorrows while suffering unjustly. For what credit is it if, when you sin and are beaten for it, you endure? But if when, but if when you do good and suffer for it, you endure, this is a gracious thing in the sight of God. This is the word of the Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Apostle Peter is a man of the flesh. That is, he is emotional. He is reactive. He is given both to fear and joy in the flip of a heartbeat. He confesses Jesus to be the Christ, the Son of the living God, and then in the next breath tries to turn Jesus from his messianic work. He boldly walks on water to Jesus, but then sinks beneath the waves in despair and terror when he sees the wind of all things. He steps up and boldly swings a sword at a man's head when Jesus is being betrayed, but then denies Christ before a servant girl. He runs away from his martyrdom, but is turned back and is crucified. What's not to like about him? He's not some stoic. He's not an intellectual who is removed from life. He is in the mix. He is a passionate fellow, engaged and grapple, grappling with life. Passionate. That's a word I think you can use with St. Peter. So when he says, abstain from the passions of the flesh, he, I think, knows what he's talking about. Because the passions of the flesh are many. This Adamic flesh is strong and lusty. Its will is always bound to things unclean, to things bent, to things spoiled, turned in on itself continually. It always craves the things that lead to death, thinking that in them it will find freedom and joy and love and life. These lusts which in our flesh wage war against your living soul. What we do with our minds and our bodies does affect our souls. There is no separation there. We are not Gnostics who perceive some separation between the flesh which is bad and the soul which is good. We see things as Jesus taught Peter to see them. That we are enfleshed souls. That what we do with our body does affect our soul. That what we do, do purpose in our minds does affect our souls. And we find that we are a big mess. These fleshly passions, these lusts, do not serve God's holiness. They are continually dragging us to the edge of the pit. Whether they are sexual lusts, which is how we often think about the word lust, but it's more than that. Whether they are sexual lusts for one not given to you in marriage or against nature itself, whether it is anger or rage or gluttony or sloth or envy, they all drag us into the grave and hell. Then there, they, there are the pet sins, which we all have, which we indulge against our souls, and we justify them as not that bad, or God understands me, or this is the way God made me. The mover behind all these things, as you know, is pride, the desire to put yourself before everything else. 
The passions of the flesh promise you everything you want, fullness, joy, life. The world pursues them with madness. And you want to do so too because you want to feel good and fulfilled and at ease. But the apostle tells you these things must be put to death. Daily, every morning when you rise up, repenting, being put to death, then we are ready for the resurrection of all flesh. Sometimes when we encounter the passions of our flesh, we can despair. But listen to what the blessed apostle says to the church before he talks about this. He calls the church the beloved ones. Beloved, that for all your sin, you are loved by the one who created you, who bought you with his own blood, who makes you holy. For the perversity of your flesh does not define who you are as a saint of God. Though we are continually tempted, we are known by this name, the Beloved. We are called this because of the, the Son of Jesus, the Son of God, the Beloved Son, Jesus, who is full of grace and truth, and we are named after him. Christ, the Lamb of God, who took away the sin of the world by his innocent suffering and death, has washed you in the water and the blood which flowed from his lanced side. His hands pierced through, lift you up out of your shame and guilt, and set you on your feet to stand. His brow and holy countenance, once encircled with thorns, marred by blows, wetted with spittle, now shines upon you with divine favor and grace. His wounds have bought your peace. You are blessed and kept safe in his wounds, where not even death nor hell can touch you. We need to know this because we all struggle with memory. The things we recall, that with things we did in our youth or perhaps yesterday that afflict us. The lusts that we indulge always leave their mark and their scar. Regret, you see, is like the disease scurvy. It's always opening up the old wounds, the old broken bones, and making them fester and hurt. But the Lord has the medicine of immortality, which heals our diseases, even the scurvy of regrets. The Lord of life entered the grave to forgive your sins. Regrets are memories, but that sin is never imputed against you. Your sin has been put away. Your Lord Christ has redeemed you redeemed you from the power of the devil who so mightily tries to drive you into despair over your past and makes you fear the death that is the fruit of our sin. But Jesus has conquered them all. And you have been baptized into him. And you have received his healing medicine, the balm of the gospel, and you are given to rejoice. You are his children. And being children of God, the apostle urges us to keep our conduct honorable in the word. You know that you are being spoken against, unless you've been asleep for the last year. You have been spoken against. Society thinks you evil for what you believe, what you teach, what we confess. They think us backwards, Neanderthals, unenlightened, unwoke, harmful to society, somebody who has to be dealt with. And you will be turned in, mocked, and excluded, both you and your children. But still the, the apostle says, keep your conduct honorable. Don't strike back. And this is not so that you are known as goody two-shoes, because none of this is about you. It is about your Father in heaven, and your works glorify him. They will shine forth on the day when he separates the sheep from the goats. We must always remember that we are traveling folk on a very narrow way, strangers, foreigners, sojourners, exiles. This world is not our permanent home. Its futile ways and things are not our permanent gifts. And our flesh may crave these worldly things. Our passions may want to be indulged, but these futile things must be resisted and disciplined. The Lord has made you a new cre creation. And that creation will always be a stranger in this world. The flesh of the Son of God has made you holy and thus you will always stand out. You have his water poured over your heads. You have his bread and wine, which feed you and bring the eternal life that he has purchased for you into your bodies. You are people of Easter, people of hope, people of love, people forgiven by the sacrifice of the sinless Lamb of God, 
who became sin for the life of the world. People made new creatures by his word. People who persevere in the acts of Christian love for our congregations and neighbors. That we are not self-serving, but we strive to serve our neighbor and glorify the name of the Lord in doing so. And so we sing, O fill us, Lord, with dauntless love. Set our heart and will on things above. The last day is coming, the day of visitation. When Jesus returns in his glory and the angels attend him and give a mighty shout and the trumpet blares its triumphant sound and the sheep are gathered to the right hand and then you will see. Because Jesus sees your deeds, your love, your faithfulness and he will commend you for them. And that day will be like the time God visited Egypt through his angel and slew all the firstborn children of the Egyptians but the Israelites were preserved. In the same way, he will be seen by all on the last day, and he will cut off the fruit, first fruits of all the evil works. But your works, though, will shine brightly, for your works are done in the name of Jesus, and they are a great testimony to our Father, and will cause glory to be sung to his name eternally. And so we live our life ever saying Christ has triumphed, he is living. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Christ is risen. Thank you for joining us for chapel. Today we pray for the congregations of the Florida Georgia District and their pastors together with all schools, teachers, and church workers. We also pray for the Reverend Jerry and Patricia Lawson. The broadcast of chapel is underwritten by LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces. To learn more about LCMS International Mission and Ministry to the Armed Forces, visit kfuo.org chapel.